Welcome back to Azimuth Podcast. I am your host, Kimberly McNabb, and with me is my husband, Barrett McNabb. In this segment, we are continuing our series covering the presidential candidates. Today, we are shining a spotlight on an intriguing candidate in the 2024 Democratic presidential nomination race, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., or RFK as many call him. He's a name synonymous with both environmental advocacy and vaccine skepticism. Before we jump into Mr. Kennedy's background stances, strengths, and weaknesses, let's watch his campaign announcement video. What we need in the United States is not division. What we need in the United States is not hatred. What we need in the United States is not violence and lawlessness, but is love and wisdom and compassion toward one another. Every nation has a darker side, and the easiest thing for a politician to do is to appeal to our hatred and our anger and our bigotry and greed and xenophobia and all of the alchemies of demagoguery. My father and my uncle had a vision for America, a vision of racial harmony, of prosperity for all Americans, of peace in the world, and of honest government. Their lives were tragically cut short, and America took a different path. Yet the possibility they foresaw is still alive, the America that almost was and yet may be. I've been fighting corporate corruption my entire life, but I understand that today the problem is much larger than a few crooked individuals. The problem is a system that no longer serves the people and a people who are so divided and so fearful that they are easily ruled. It's time to unlearn the reflexes of fear and blame and find ways to unify ourselves and turn our country around. I won't pretend to you that it will be easy, but I know what it will take. My father said it, love, wisdom, and compassion toward one another, and that's where we need to start. We will scale down the war machine and bring our resources home. We will rebuild our water systems, repair our roads, modernize our railroads, and clean up our environment. We will also clean up government and earn back the people's trust. We will end the secrecy, the censorship, and the surveillance. We will again be a fearless land of liberty. The cost of freedom is always high, but Americans have always paid it. We will face honestly the darker parts of our history, the genocide, the racism, not to shame or blame or punish, but to repair as best we can in a spirit of compassion and kindness toward all. I'm inviting all of you to join me to create an America that we can believe in and be proud of again. I'm Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and I'm running for President of the United States. Okay, that was very inspirational. Yeah. Um, relied a lot, <laughs> relied a lot on his, uh, on his legacy. Um, uh, a lot of imagery, you know, there with uh, John F. Kennedy and and his father as well. Um, but uh, but you know, he had some new things to say as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I was impressed with that. Um, you know, there's not anything that um, in that video that you know, I don't think anybody could disagree with. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, infrastructure improvements, um, healing racial tensions. Um, making the economy work for everybody, ending of censorship. Um, those talking points can be found on both sides of the aisle. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, I think, um, you know, it was very inspirational and, and a, a well, uh, it's very melancholy. The, the music was not yeah. like this giant inspiring thing. It was thoughtful. Right. I thought so. But uh, Robert F. Kennedy uh, is junior is 69. He's married to Cheryl Hines, uh, coming from one of the most iconic political families in the United States. His father, Robert F. Kennedy, was a senator and U.S. Attorney General, while his uncle was none other than the 35th President Kennedy himself. And Kennedy's family legacy has always loomed large. Growing up in the shadow of his illustrious relatives, he experienced both the privilege and the burden of being part of the Kennedy dynasty. Tragedy struck when his father was assassinated in 1968, further propelling him into the world of politics. And after completing his education at Harvard University and the University of Virginia School of Law, Kennedy became an acclaimed environmental lawyer. 
His notable achievements include winning a $290 million case against Montecito over the alleged cancer-causing properties of their weed killer, Roundup. I've used Roundup in the past. Mm -hmm. He's also a well-known author. Among his published books are two New York Times bestsellers, Crimes Against Nature, and The Real Anthony Fauci. However, Kennedy is perhaps best known for his controversial stance on vaccines and his vocal criticism of the COVID-19 lockdowns. His anti-vaccine activism led to his Instagram being banned in 2021, and he has faced opposition even within his own family over his social media posts. However, on his campaign website, it states that he is not an anti-vaxxer, but he believes vaccination should be voluntary and based on informed consent. Kennedy's campaign platform aims to transcend partisan lines, encouraging people to focus on shared values rather than divisive issues. His ambitions include a blend of ideas. In regards to abortion, he wants to restore abortion rights, but he wants universal free child care and economic relief for working families with the intention of reducing abortion rates. His border policy would control the barter with technology like motion sensors, cameras, lights, and ample well-trained personnel. Trying to cross the border by stealth would become a losing proposition. A President Kennedy would appoint hundreds more judges to deal with the backlog and to ensure that newly arriving immigrants get a hearing before being admitted into the United States. Regarding the Second Amendment, Kennedy has spent much of his time hunting in Virginia, so he understands the need for guns, but he's not opposed to banning assault weapons. What he may be his most controversial idea is that he is not opposed to pardoning Donald Trump if Mr. Kennedy feels that a conviction violated Mr. Trump's rights. Kennedy boasts several strengths that could propel his candidacy forward. Finally, he has extensive name recognition and his legacy status due to his family's iconic political history. And this recognition provides him with significant platform and the ability to mobilize supporters. Moreover, Kennedy's willingness to appear on various platforms, including conservative podcasts and TV shows such as Megyn Kelly, The Rubin Report, Fox News, and much more, demonstrates his openness to engaging with diverse audiences. As the youngest candidate in the Democratic field at 69, he brings a unique perspective to the race. However, Kennedy's anti-vaccine activism has made him a very controversial figure within the Democratic Party among medical professionals. Critics have labeled him a conspiracy theorist for his outspoken views on vaccines and claimed that chemicals in the water are turning boys transgender, which could alienate a portion of potential voters. People on the Internet have, called, have been critical of him for filming himself working out shirtless, either to show off or highlight that he's more physically fit than Joe Biden. But I think I speak for all of us when I say it's clear as day, even with the shirt on, <laughs> he, he, he he's a physically uh, fit uh, human specimen. So especially Absolutely. when when you when you consider See that he's some 60, guns on that video. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, especially you know considering that he's sixty nine years old. Mm -hmm. Additionally, the Democratic Party's decision not to hold primary debates poses a challenge for Kennedy to showcase his positions and engage with other candidates directly. This lack of debate exposure may limit his ability to gain momentum in the primary race. In conclusion, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. brings a unique blend of family legacy, environmental advocacy, and controversial stances to the 2024 Democratic presidential nomination race. His ability to transcend party lines and engage with diverse audiences could be an asset, but his anti-vaccine activism and limited debate exposure remain significant hurdles. Well, stay tuned as we track the progress of all the presidential candidates right here on the Azmuth Podcast. Thank you for joining us. Hi, everyone. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy our show with all the stories we share, we would love your support. And it's as easy as clicking that subscribe or follow button. This will ensure you never miss an episode and keeps us bringing you these important stories. Your support makes a huge difference. Thank you so much for being part of our podcast family. Thanks, and keep tuning in.